Welcome everybody, this is Sit Back Reviews, and today I'm going to give you a brief review and the pros and cons of Far Cry New Dawn. Now, let's go scavenge this world together. So, Far Cry New Dawn is a sequel to Far Cry 5, so in terms it's kind of like Far Cry 5.5. Now, this game was made in nine months like the devs were just pounding through just to make this game but they were also making the dlc at the same time that's kind of crazy when you think about it but why don't we get straight to the main part of this review and that's the story so the story is quite interesting see this takes place after the events of far cry 5 so everyone went into the bunkers after the nuclear apocalypse. And with time, nature regrew. And six years later, everyone came out of the bunkers to re-civilize the land. Until this group called the Highwaymen, run by these two twins called Mickey Mouse and Little Lou, come busting in and being big old bullies and taking over and all that. Now, let's cut to the present. And in the present, you're on a train and you choose your character. Now that means you're another Silent Potato again, so Silent Potato number two. And you're the captain of security to this man named Thomas Rush, who's going around and saving and building towns. So also on this train is the daughter of Nick Rye, Carmina Rye. And she's grown up, everybody. It's so nice. Like, she's a nice little lady. Well, well, other than that, she kills, but let's keep going. <laughs> So the train gets hijacked just right off the bat and you're already pushed into the action. And after someone just gets killed, you know, normal stuff, Thomas gives you a nice little trust push off the edge and he gets kidnapped and from there you're saved from Carmina who then takes you to the camp called Prosperity who's run by Granny Kim. And she instantly just sends you to go save Thomas because, I mean, you don't get a break in this game. Once you saved, and once you get there, and once you save Thomas, you realize he didn't need to be saved. This man he's beating needs to be saved. Like, holy shit. I'm feeling bad for this guy rather than Thomas. Other than that, you then get on Mickey and Lou's hate list, and they are now out to take you, to kill you, and take out Prosperity. Simple stuff and you need help. So you then have to join up the, with this group called New Eden that is run by Joseph. And Joseph is interesting enough, the villain from Far Cry 5. So you get there and you see... Hey, you look familiar. Well, other than that, you find Joseph's son, who's called Ethan, who has a lot of daddy issues, and he wants you to go make sure Joseph's dead. So you go on his trial, and Joseph's not dead. He's actually alive. He's just been waiting for you. And from there, Joseph decides that he's going to help out Prosperity. And that's when Prosperity and the New Eden join together to take down the Highwaymen. Now, the story gets much more interesting later on, but it's not 10 out of 10. And it's not bad. It's just, it's in between. It's not a, not the worst story, but it's, it's okay. Especially when there's only three acts in 13 chapters in total. I, the pacing's really rushed in this game. And it's kind of sad because I wanted more of a story, especially coming from Far Cry 5. But other than that, let's get to our next segment, the gameplay. So, most of this gameplay is brought back from Far Cry 5. Um, so, for the sake of length, I'm when I plan to review Far Cry 5 later down the line, I'll talk about it then because there are some big changes in the series. So, for now, I'm just going to talk about what's new to this game. And right off the bat, there is a whole new game feature called Light RPG. And Ubisoft has been putting this in their games a lot more. I think they're planning to make an RPG soon. 
but you know you have such games as Mario Odyssey and The Division so in this game it goes by tiers so one two three and four or in easier terms white blue purple yellow this is a weird change because it can be fun but it can also suck and it can be cool because you do have to update your arsenal more often and you can't just stick with your trusty old pistol you got you know you got to keep building up because you got to have better guns to accommodate for the better enemy and speaking of guns these things are so funny to look at i mean look at this it looks like they just started slapping things together hold on let's put a spray can on a sniper and say it's stealth slap that shit together you know like look at this thing a screwdriver on an ak it, it's just like they were just looked at the table and was just like slap that shit together you know and it's just it gets even better with this one new weapon and this thing rips and it's called the mother freaking chainsaw launcher and it is probably the best weapon in the series i think it could possibly be but this thing not only cuts through enemies it bounces off walls like you don't even have to aim anymore you can just walk into an enemy outpost and just be like <laughs> am i getting warmer but other than that there are some gripes with this game, some that I personally came upon, and that was the materials. Now, this game goes off scavenging, you gotta build up everything, so it's understandable, but there are rarer materials, and these ones are hard to come by, because you have to do a new thing called expeditions. Expeditions take you to a whole new state where you have to go stealth in and take something and then come out guns and blazing from the highwayman. And it's cool on paper and it's really cool to see how the apocalypse happened to these other states. But when you realize that there's only three of these and you need the parts to build more weapons in the game, especially when you want purple and orange, I say orange, especially when you want purple and yellow you have to keep doing these and it becomes a grind and some people like to grind in games but when this game i don't really see far cry being a grindy game and to me it becomes filler just my personal opinion but next one and that is ethanol ethanol is needed for everything you need to buy a map gotta have some ethanol you need to get some perks to build up prosperity you gotta get some ethanol you know that car needs gas oh you gotta get some ethanol i mean you need this thing for everything and there's a lot of ways to come by if you need a quick pinch just do something around the world but there's one and that will give you the most ethanol and that's capturing outposts now they're pretty simple because they start out at easier tiers but now there's a thing called scavenge. When you want to scavenge an outpost, you completely leave the outpost, the highwaymen take over, and then you have to recapture it for more ethanol. By doing this, that means it's harder difficulty, so that means more alarms and more enemies with higher tiers. Simple on paper and fun at first. But here's another gripe. When you realize that you need ethanol for everything, you now have to take these outposts and scavenge them a lot more than you wanted to do. And again, it becomes a grind. And to me, it becomes filler because this is just a way of getting more gameplay out of you for accommodating for such a short story they have. And I understand. $40, okay, it's a cheap game, but I don't like that this is their way of getting more gameplay and getting more out of it. I love that the locations are, and I love that they're in some different location, 
but I don't like that this is their way of getting more out of you. But other than that, I I had fun with this game, and the gameplay is same old, same old, Far Cry, stealth, all that, and it's it's nothing different. Just a little, some more smaller stuff, but it's not truly big. But let's get to the next part, and probably the reason why you should get this game, because it is the best aspect of this game. The atmosphere. Earphone users, I am very sorry. But this game is beautiful. Oh my god. When I walked out of prosperity, I stumbled upon Fall of End, and my mind was blown. Oh, this is the best apocalyptic world I've seen in the game. Nature has just taken its course all over again. It's overgrown everything. Old, old locations in a newer life. Every location has a story now. You can find out who lived, who died, who moved on, who stayed. Are they old? Everyone's old! Oh my god! This alone what is what sold me to this game. And there's so much nostalgia to this. Especially if you really had a fun time with Far Cry 5. But other than that, let's get to the very last part of this review. And that's the pros and cons. So to the MS Paint chart we go. So to start off, let's talk about the cons. And I'm only going to talk about the major ones and not the smallest, just for simplicity. So first off, I would say the chapters. This game was a real letdown for the story because it feels a little too rushed. Because one moment you're doing this, next this, and next that. And it's not like Far Cry 5 and it really does suck because I was hoping for a better story from this game, especially coming off of Far Cry 5. And other than that, it's not a big problem, but it's just, if you wanted more of a story in this game, this might not be the game for you, especially if you didn't play Far Cry 5. So just keep that in mind. Next would be the filler. And if you already heard before, I personally think this game has a lot of filler in it. The expeditions and the scavenging. They're just filler to me. And I understand. It's $40. And it's a way of getting more gameplay out of the game. But when you realize, again, with such a short story and no gameplay, it kinda sucks. It really does. But lastly, I would say the material. I love me a good scavenger, but when you're forced to do the parts that are filler, it doesn't become fun, and it doesn't become a grind, it becomes a chore, and it loses its free exploration part. But let's get to the next part, and that is the pros. Right off the bat, I would say the first pro is beautiful. This game is freaking gorgeous. Like I said, I was stunned how they managed to do this, and overall, I'm really happy they did this. I'm tired of dusty old apocalyptic worlds. But next part is the story. And I know you're thinking, well, hey, you put the story as the first con. And I'm not talking about the main story. I'm talking about the side story. I love that every location had a story, and I love to hear everyone's character stories throughout the whole game. I love hearing and seeing old faces in a newer life. And I want to see who had a family or who lived, really. Now, lastly, and I say this is probably the reason why this is. This right here, and I'm, and I'm not messing around, this right here is what you have to buy this game. Chainsaw Launcher. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. You probably noticed that I didn't put the light RPG down as a con or a pro and the reason for that is I want to know in the comments below 
what you personally think of it. Is it a con or is it a, is it a uh, pro? Now, I know you're also thinking, man, this guy just can't speak for the life of him. And that's because I want to free ball a lot of stuff here so it feels like a genuine conversation rather than me reading off a script like a boring old man. So other than that, this is Sit Back Reviews. I hope you liked the video and I'll see you next time.